Good evening. The roadmap to unlocking is inching closer. Plans in England won't be revealed by the Prime Minister until Monday, but today Nicola Sturgeon announced a phased return for Scottish school children from next week. She too hopes to outline plans for opening up then, though she warns Scots will likely be told they won't be able to book holidays at home or abroad over Easter. They may be permitted staycations in the summer if the science allows it. Meanwhile, in England, nearly two million people will soon be receiving letters advising them they've been added to the shielding list and prioritised for vaccination. For some time, we've heard calls that people with learning disabilities and those from an ethnic minority background, amongst others, should be prioritised. What can we glean from today's announcement about where the government is moving on this? Here's our policy editor, Lewis Goodall. Well, joining me now, Saul Faust, Professor of Paediatric Immunology and Infectious Diseases at Southampton University. Andrew Hayward, Professor of Infectious Disease Epidemiology and Inclusion Health Research at UCL. And Yasmin Qureshi, Labour MP for Bolton, who has suffered from COVID-19 and was hospitalised in December. And Andrew Hayward, if we start with you, what can you tell us about this new shielding announcement? Is it a sort of more sophisticated calculation of risk, if you like? Yes, sir. And Yasmin Qureshi, just picking up on that point, I mean, there has been a lot of talk about whether people, for example, from different ethnic backgrounds should be prioritised for vaccination. What do you think about that? Should they? I think so. How are you Sorry. feeling now? I am much better now, but it took me a while. Glad to hear it. And are you using your experiences to talk about the dangers of not being vaccinated? Absolutely. I mean... Andrew Hayward, Saul Faust, Yasmin Qureshi, thank you so much. We've run out of time. Thank you. Now, nearly eight weeks after the last-minute Christmas Eve trade deal that averted a no-deal Brexit, what have we learned about the kind of relationship being forged between the EU and the UK? What can we read into the warm words about friendship and the less warm tensions raised over the fallout of the vaccination programme, for example? Our geographical proximity to the EU may end up trumping everything else, but there's a growing sense that the past few weeks may have shown the EU and UK will be rivals more than good neighbours. Our diplomatic editor, Mark Urban, has this report. And some of the biggest names in British theatre are imploring the PM to go back to the negotiating table to ensure visa-free work in the EU. The likes of Julie Walters, Anne-Marie Duff, Sarah McKellen and Patrick Stewart have signed an open letter from the Performing Arts Union Equity, which calls the current Brexit deal a towering hurdle that must be overcome. They say working in the EU is now costly and bureaucratic and that British talent, already hit by Covid, is missing out. I'm joined by the actor Cyril Unry, a regular on stage and screen, who is a signatory to the letter. And Cyril, just, just tell me first, wh why did you write the letter? What's the problem? Well, I mean, the problem is... Now, the government says it was actually the EU that rejected the proposals that would have allowed yeah. this, and it's working urgently to resolve any new barriers that people yeah. like you face. What do you say well, to that? Well, I say, well, by the time they get around to it, they were... Now, is this the time to debate free speech on campus? The government believes so, and today announced plans for a free speech champion. It's also proposing universities will be required by law to promote diversity of views. Some universities and student groups think the threat to free speech on campus has been overblown and is a side issue compared to the struggles they're having with learning and teaching during the pandemic. So who's right in the campus culture war?